Hello and welcome back. Today I want to talk to you about the link between summer and depression. A lot of people don't make that link, but it can happen. Now the summer can trigger depression for a lot of reasons. First of all, it can be hot and miserable. And as odd as it may sound, some of us put ourselves under so much pressure to have a good time and relax in the summer, we kick ourselves if this is not our reality. We think, oh man, there's Johnny just having a great old time swimming and vacationing. Oh, look, there's Betty planning another barbecue. And look at me. The sun is shining. All is well with the world. And I can't get happy. If this sounds familiar, I want to give you three things you can do today to beat summer depression and craft a summer that you find enjoyable. Uh, number one is get real and get in touch. Let's start by getting real and stop with the comparison. Yes, everyone seems to be having the time of their lives during the summer. Seems is the operative word. Now, this reminds me of the story of the dazzling couple who attended the ball. They walked in holding hands and their eyes were lovingly locked to one another all night. When the night ended and they arrived back home, the two went their own separate ways into separate bedrooms without uttering a word to each other. My point is all that glitters is not gold. So do yourself a big favor and mind your own summer business. Now, what about getting in touch? No one wants to talk about it, but the flip side of depression is loneliness and isolation. This is also a dirty little trick of depression. The more depressed you feel, the more you isolate. And the more you isolate, the more depressed you feel. Friends are hard to find and best friends are even harder to stumble on. Here's the good news about socializing. It gives you an instant lift and these people don't have to be your best buddies for you to get the total benefit. Reach out, make a plan. Invite someone over, schedule some nice juicy phone calls during the week, have a party. It doesn't matter. Just make sure you schedule meaningful social contact at least twice a week. I can hear someone saying, Sheila, my dirty little secret is I don't have any friends. If this is the case, look into online meetup groups. Check your metro section in your local paper to find out what's going on this weekend. Get a pet or two or three. If it sounds like I'm pushing this connection bit, I am. It's because people who are socially connected actually live longer, more fruitful lives. Yes, they have a longer lifespan. But Sheila, I'm too depressed to even reach out. Two words for you. Force yourself. Yes, force yourself. If one plan to connect with a friend doesn't work, don't get discouraged. Just move to the next. You're doing what you need to do to keep yourself moving forward. Second point, seek professional help. You know what? Having a trusted person to talk to is a form of medicine in and of itself. And a lot of times that's all most of us need to know that someone cares and is listening. Life can get on top of us and keeping ourselves together is worth the effort. We all know what happens when we run off into the ditch. These are simply the days and times we're living in. Hurt from the past, racing thoughts and stress. If there are unresolved issues in your life, taking you down the road of depression on a consistent basis, it doesn't matter if it's spring, winter, or summer, you're going to feel bad. Talk therapy, being heard, and learning new coping skills can lead to your depression cure. If you have tried to beat your depression alone and try it once again with little or no success, this means you can't clear the hurdle and it's time to get help. A great resource to find a reputable therapist in your area is psychologytoday.com and networktherapy.com. If I had to pick any time in our history to be depressed, it would be now. You know, that may sound a bit odd, but 
truly, there's just an army waiting to help you along the path. You cannot win the battle of depression if you refuse to even show up on the field. My last and final point, point number three, is to get your body in motion. Even if you're sluggish, even if it's challenging, moving is something every one of us can do and it doesn't cost you a thing. Exercise is the single greatest gift you can give your brain in terms of mood, memory, and learning. Moving even 20 minutes a day, a 20 minute brisk walk can release some powerful endorphins that produce a natural high. No gym membership necessary. All you need is a pair of old gym shoes. Another way to start moving is staying connected with activities you love. It doesn't matter what it is. Fishing, gardening, music, reading, dancing, cooking, photography, sewing, volunteering, whatever it is, if you love it, it will lift you up. And if it lifts you up, it can lift you above depression. Look, bottom line, depression is something that most of us will face and many of us will battle in our lifetime. There is a way to get better. There are things that you can do, but it takes an effort on your part. You deserve to have a good summer. I hope that some of the things I share will get your juices flowing and give you a jump start on beating summer depression. And I will check in with you again soon. Thank you so much.